Bonaire's Salt Pier, late September. The beauty beguiles you from the wonder that lies beneath the waves. About this time every year, young sea turtles come in to feed off the shallow bottom sponges. It is 4.30 as the sun starts its slow, purposeful search for the horizon. Divers and snorkelers come in to get a glimpse of these magical marine animals. It does not take long to find them. They feed in two to five meters of water and pay no attention to us humans. Like us, sea turtles need to breathe air, and these little guys' lungs are small. It is not long before they head to the surface. Their shells don't allow their rib cages to expand and contract like us. Instead of a diaphragm, they have muscles lining the inside of their shells to help push air in and out. Their lungs reside in the upper half of their shell. Green sea turtles are named for the greenish color of their cartilage and fat, not their shells. Those sponges look awfully good. Better get another breath of that fresh fun air air. The turtles are not alone. Blue tang and doctorfish feed in the shallows too. They don't seem to bother this young guy. But when this smooth trunkfish smacks him in the beak, well, that is a bit much. Bonefish and palometta like the shallows too. Their front fins have a nail which this guy uses to dig into the sand to get more of that sponge. This one is using it to dig for China. A major reason so many sea turtles call Bonaire home is due to an amazing organization called Sea Turtle Conservation Bonaire. In this episode, we will get an inside look as to why. Drifting this is the story the of two divers Sometimes who left the corporate world island. and moved to Bonaire to live a diver's life by the sea. Many only dream about this life. Our hope is to inspire you through our experiences and stories so that you can live the dream too. This is A Diver's Life. The water and sky, reflection in my eye, and it's true, so true.
Hey guys, welcome back to this special edition of A Diver's Life. In the next two episodes, we're going to be focusing on the conservation of sea turtles on Bonaire. And the organization behind that called Sea Turtle Conservation Bonaire. They're absolutely incredible. And today we're going to be going with them out to climb Bonaire and their volunteers to do sea turtle mass monitoring. And we're going to witness something absolutely amazing, and that's the rescue of three hatchling hawksbill turtles that are critically endangered and watch them getting released back into the sea. Just, just a life-changing event. But right now, we've got to hurry. We've got to get to the boat, which leaves very shortly. And uh, come on with us, and we're going to have a lot of fun. See you at the boat. It is 7.15 in the morning as I wait to board the smaller of these two sea turtle conservation boats. We will be servicing and monitoring sea turtle nests on Klein Bonaire. We leave the dock at Plaza Resort and head to No Name Beach. From there we will inspect the nests up to the knife dive site. We will then do the same two kilometers in the opposite direction from knife. Yeah. Captain Dan starts the engine and we are ready to go. Isabella is an intern and co-lead this morning. We are accompanied by a number of very happy volunteers. I asked Dan about the use of cages around the nests. So you say at night you place a cage on so that they, they don't wander in the wrong place. Exactly, you keep them all together. And, and then you you, really, you, you you take them over to the water? Or what you no, what we did yesterday is we, uh, after we got the call from a kind uh, guest from our village, yeah. we went there and then we collected them, make sure the nest was empty. Yeah. And then we drove all the way south and somewhere on a nice dark beach we, uh, we released them. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So how big do the adults get? They can uh, grow up to 200 kilos. 200 yeah. kilos, wow. Yeah. wow. Roughly the size of a meter, maybe more. So you don't typically get those on the island? Only during nesting season. Okay. Yeah. And then still, if they're hard to find, sometimes you see people seeing them, but uh, usually you get recordings of people seeing adult hawksbills or adult loggerheads. Uh -huh. We exit Plaza Resort and head by Harbor Village for a quick inspection from sea where sea turtles hatched last night. Bonaire is home to three of the six of the world's critically endangered sea turtles. Thankfully, Sea Turtle Conservation Bonaire has been committed to protecting them since 1991. So where was the nest that... Uh, uh, where the guys are standing, around there. Oh, okay. Through the palm tree. And there's one right here, next to the wall. Oh yeah? Yeah. So it still hasn't hatched yet. No. Huh? Well, and another one right there next to the wall. Typical incubation well, we times are 50 to 60 to days. Go. We arrive at No Name Beach on Klein Bonaire. Isabella gives us a briefing. Sense of the nest is being laid here. Uh, per season, this varies a little bit. It's about 50 to 70 nests per year. Uh, most of these nests are being laid by hostel and loggerheads. But from time to time, we also have the green one. Today, we also want to uh, check on the green nest, so that's very nice. <laughs> uh, what we're going to do today, we're going to zero point the second that way. And then we're going to the other side that's two kilometers. Yeah. 
So, uh, we're here today. Uh, back there. <laughs> you. Thank you. Dan secures the boat. Today, and in part two, we will see these trained professionals handling sea turtles. We must not touch them, especially fragile hatchlings. Endangered species are protected, and turtles can be vulnerable to harmful human bacteria. We see our first nest identified by an indentation in the sand and a sea turtle conservation blue ribbon. We find a second green turtle nest. Green turtle nests are 70 centimeters to one meter deep. Once Wednesday we were also here and we felt that maybe we saw some tracks, turtles, it could be something else. So we're just checking the nest to see if we find anything or that they need maybe a little bit more time to uh, help. And from the groen, how deep graven do the this is a green one, yeah. and it, uh, it varies a bit, but it's um, mostly between the 70 okay. centimeters and 1 meter deep. Yeah, 70 centimeters and 1 meter deep. So this one is down. at 72 centimeters. That's where we found the first egg. Looking for the nest ribbon. We always, when we find the eggs, we also put uh, a nest ribbon in it. So when we uh, are looking for the eggs when they have hatched, we know that we're in the right place. Okay. But we haven't found it. After extensive digging, Dan and Isabella determined this one has hatched, and we checked this off the list. Isabella sees another blue ribbon. This is a hawksbill nest. These are much shallower. So this nest is 57 days old, and we're close to the end of the incubation period. And you can see by the blue ribbon there, they've marked this. Going fairly shallow, I'm guessing this is a hawksbill nest. This nest has hatched. More hatched and unhatched eggs are found. Daniel, what's a typical nest size for green and hawksbills? The green is around 100 uh, eggs. The hawksbill is more around 150 eggs. Yeah. And the logat is more 120 eggs. 120 eggs? Yeah. Well, this season has been kind of strange because we have green turtle nest with the size of 170 eggs. Yeah. The other day we found the hawksbill nest, which we still maybe consider it could be two nests. Yeah. Uh, because it had like 260 eggs. <laughs> wow. Thanks to their efforts, three critically endangered hawksbills were rescued and they let them go. It's estimated that 1 in 1,000 hatchlings will survive to adulthood. We are witness to the miracle of life and the innocence of not knowing the struggle that awaits them made possible by these amazing people. The experience is life-changing. There he goes. Now the next two. Hatchlings eat a variety of prey, including things like mollusks and crustaceans, hydrozoans, sargassum seaweed, jellyfish, and fish eggs. Normally, on the beach, hatchlings must escape predators like birds and crabs to make it to the sea. Once in the water, hatchlings are consumed by seabirds and fish. The last two need a little help. After all, they just woke up. Walking back to the sea turtle conservation boat, I reflect on the amazing work they do.
this has been quite a morning. I can't believe really how much they actually do in sea turtle conservation, all the different things they have to worry about uh, whenever they encounter or, in, or interact with the turtles uh, throughout their life cycle here on the island. Uh, I mean, just thinking about when uh, they have hatchings at night, uh, they don't allow people to come in with lights because it confuses the turtles. They do things like putting cages around the nest uh, so that they can be contained to some degree so that when they come out, say at Harbor Village, where they have a lot of lights, it's a resort, um, they don't try to go ahead at a lot of different locations with the light and get confused. Um, they make sure that turtles make it to the sea as much as possible. Sometimes they, like here on uh, Klein Air, they uh, don't come out of the nest. Sometimes they have to help them out. Some, most of them will hatch, but some of them they have to help out and release them into the water. Some of them, in fact, don't make it because uh, there's a reason they didn't come out of the nest in many cases. So there's a lot they take in, into consideration. And um, it's pretty clear that they have a profound impact on the number of turtles that actually make it safely to the sea, uh, which wouldn't normally happen in any other places. Quite an amazing thing. What I like most is the involvement of young people in sea turtle conservation. Let's take a few minutes to speak with Isabella about being an intern at Sea Turtle Conservation Bonaire. So Isabella, tell me how you got to become an intern here with Sea Turtle Conservation. Well, I'm studying wildlife management at the moment in Leeuwarda, that's the city uh, in the Netherlands. Yeah. And I always was very interested in uh, oceanic ecosystems. So then I came in contact with this, uh, with this organization mm -hmm. and I applied and, uh, well, fortunately for me, they picked me. <laughs> uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, very nice. So what do you, what do you like most about it? Uh, well, the field work, of course. Yeah. Uh, we get to interact with nature mm -hmm. um, and that's always very nice, but also in a way that we uh, are not invasive to nature. Because it's very important to let uh, nature do her own thing. And then in some cases, uh, we have to intervene. Uh, for example, the small ones, like the little turtles, hatch at night. Uh, and they are attracted to the biggest uh, light source. And for example, we have nests at Donkey Beach. And they are uh, in front of the airport. And when they hatch at night, the biggest light source is the airport. So then they would go over the road and the chance that they are being hit and don't make the sea are very large. So that these are moments that we do intervene. What's the most amazing thing you've seen since you've been doing this? Is it just a, a hatching event or what do you think? Oh, it was definitely a hatching event at Playa Chiquito. That is uh, also a beach in the Washington Park. Yes. Uh, we have a lot of green ones that nest there. And yeah. uh, we also put a, a barrier around it because at Playa Chiquito, it really depends on uh, how the environment is. Sometimes there's a lot of sand and then we don't intervene. But sometimes uh, the ocean takes the sand away and there are a lot of rocks. So the chances of the little ones getting in the rocks are, well, almost a hundred. And then they do not make it to the ocean. Okay. And uh, well, we got there and uh, the little ones were just about to hatch. And you saw all those little heads coming out of the sand and it was just beautiful. Yeah. It really was. So where, where are you going to, you're going to go back in, uh, in February. Right? Where, yeah. What are you going to do next, do you think? Uh, well, I'm going to write my thesis. Yeah, okay. <laughs> about what I'm not uh, certain yet. Yeah. And then I want to do my master's in uh, forest and nature conservation at the uh, Wageningen Youth University. Coming up in part two, we'll head out to Bonaire's Lac Bay to witness sea turtle conservation Bonaire's survey and tagging program. Meet with her manager, Kai Schuch, and brave an East Coast shore dive to film big sea turtles in the wild. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and hit the subscribe button and the bell. It goes a long way to supporting this channel and helps you to know when new content is released. I'm coasting on a riptide. Thank you for watching. Every day and night, I can't sleep when you're gone.